Hi, I'm here to interview Kariam V. Booker, Booker for Greer. He's running for City Council of District 2 for the City of Greer. Hi, Kariam. Hey, Kelly. It's good to see you today. Good to see you, too. Kariam, the first question, tell us who you are. So, like you said, my name is Kariam Booker, and I'm running for Greer City Council. A little bit about me is I'm from Greer, born and raised. I've been Greer all my life, 29 years. And so... My, my family's from Greer. My mother grew up down below BMW in Greer. My father grew up in Sunnydale. So I'm, I'm Greer born and raised from the core. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in Greer. Um, I actually went to private school right here in Greer at Calvary Christian School. Um, after graduation from Calvary, I went on to Clemson University and got a degree in uh, civil engineering. And then from there, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina for about a year and worked at an engineering consulting firm called Land Design. And then my heart kind of brought me back to Greer and opportunities brought me back. Ever since then, I've been at SCDOT in which I work as an engineer there. Okay, so what ties you into the politics and why do you think that you're qualified for the office? So really, I'm not a politician. I'm not a politician at the core and I'll tell anybody that. So what tied me to getting involved in the community there was a situation that occurred right here on my side of town on Bible Brook Drive. There was an old wooden bridge that they decided to take out. Well, initially, um, me working at DOT, I already knew what the outcome would be for the bridge. But uh, they went and, and council met and they talked about the bridge. And, and when it was time for the vote to occur, our Current councilman gave a no vote. I said, oh, yeah, that's great. He's, he's concerned about the community. He really wants to, you know, see us flourish. Well, the second uh, vote came around, and it was a no-show. He didn't even show up for the second vote. So that's when I decided to dive a little further. Well, after I looked further into the situation for the bridge on Bible Brook Drive, well, I found out that this was a bargaining chip between the railroad and the city of Greer in which they decided, they said, hey, city, if you guys go in and take this bridge out, we'll in turn do some upgrades for your downtown project. And and they also offered some money for this as well. So they use a low to moderate income community as a bargaining chip to progress the things you see in downtown. So that is really the straw that broke the camel's back. And I said, well, if I want something done in my community, I'm going to have to be the one to do it. Wow, that's awesome. So this this will take us in segue into our next question. When did you say that I'm going to run for this office? So I've always been involved in politics. You can go back to to me in at 12th grade when Obama was running in 2008. We had a mock election. Well, in the mock election, I was, quote unquote, the Democratic candidate, Obama. And then we had the other um politician as well. Well, I went to a private school, which is predominantly conservative, Republican, you know, uh, that makeup. And when it was time for the election to occur, I got almost 50 percent of the votes in a conservative group that knew, knowingly knew that I was the Democratic candidate. So politics has always been in my blood. I've always followed politics. I, I call myself a political analyst. I like to see how people respond to political pressure, and political situations. So just going through uh, those events, that kind of cultivated me wanting to, to be involved in politics. And and at the end of the day, I feel like I have the, the skill set and the mind and the forward thinking vision to, to handle politics. Wow. So who inspires you in politics? So my inspiration actually comes from a lot of folks uh, throughout the years. I've met a lot of different folks um, initially. So funny story, really just just an a insight on who I am. In 2004, uh, I was at a commencement address for my sister. She was graduating. And at this commencement address, they had Senator David Thomas come speak. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, after the commencement, I went and talked to, to Senator Thomas and he was just so nice to me. And, um, you know, I was a young kid at that time, 2004, and uh, he told me, he's like, I just want to let you know, I, I think you're a really good guy and that you can do this as well. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I got a picture with me and President Bush. 
Uh, would you care to have that? I said, yeah, you know, I, I'll take it. So he autographed a picture of him and President Bush sitting behind Air Force One when they came to BMW and Greer and sent that to me and says, the description, it said, you can do this too. So that kind of cultivated, and I'm not saying that he is, he is the one that inspired me, mm -hmm. but he started that inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I've, throughout the years, I met a lot of different political folks to just kind of inspire me as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> that is amazing. What made you decide to run for Grid City Council this year? This year, the reason I'm running is, like I said, if I want things done in our community, I really felt like that it was going to be me to have to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, I had contemplated running for council about four years ago as well, and I was actually in a different district at that time. And it, the timing wasn't right. You know, uh, the Lord wasn't tugging on me like he was this time. So I decided, you know what, um, I'm not going to run at this point. Let me see how life is going in four years. And well, the stars seemed to align at this point in which, you know, I was getting a lot of support from others, getting a lot of inspiration from others and meeting folks to say, hey, I really like what you have to say. And I think you can do this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Timing is everything. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So think of what you want to see and doing in, in this area. So what do you want to see? What changes do you want to bring about? Okay. So. After talking to probably hundreds of folks, um, the consensus was the same infrastructure. Infrastructure was what what everyone kept you know, calling out. How do we get sidewalks? How do we get inf uh, drainage systems fixed? How do I get this done in regards to infrastructure? Well, I sat back and thought about what is the components that create this infrastructure situation that we're in. And after Thinking about these things, uh, it, it came down to three different pillars. The first pillar was uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. Greer seeing uh, tons of economic development in our community and throughout Greer as a whole. The second pillar was affordable housing. Mm -hmm. You see how rental prices are going. You can almost buy a house cheaper than you can to rent. Yes. And then the last pillar was gentrification. Mm -hmm. So in, in synopsis, it was gentrification, affordable housing, and economic development. And I tell everyone, these three ingredients is really what create this infrastructure pie that I'm calling out. I really feel that if we can tackle those three issues, the infrastructure will take care of itself. How do you plan to tackle these issues? So really a lot of this is about education. How do we get the information out to the constituents? This whole process I've been trying to unite the communities, and these communities that I've been focusing on is the Sunnyside, Sunny Glen, Sunnydale, Victor Mill area, Greentown, Needmore. Mm -hmm. All these areas is one community, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks don't realize that. So it's like, how do I get this information out here to say, hey, these are the problems we're facing. How can we address these problems and get you educated enough to say, hey, when Mr. Developer comes to your home and says, I want to offer you X amount of dollars for your house. Sit back and think about that decision because it can go two ways. You can take that money and, and, and you know, better yourself. Or you could say, well, hey, if he's offering me 120000 for my house, I wonder what it's really worth. Mm -hmm. You know, what, how is that going to really affect this community if I go in and sell grandpa's house or, or grandmother's house? So that's what it's really about is educating the folks mm -hmm. to, to say, hey, we want to make a better neighborhood. We want to make a better community for ourselves. So how can we continue to educate ourselves and understand how this economic situation works so that we, in the end, are getting the things that we want in our communities? Wow. Where do you want to see your constituency in terms of development in four years once you are elected? So we're here at my house shooting this uh, interview right now. And right now behind me is almost 100 acres for sale. Um, they want to go in and possibly to develop this, this property. What I really would like to see the city go in and, and investigate, because I know it can be done, is how do we talk to these developers and say, hey, Mr. Developer, you're going to go in and build 500 homes. Well, you're going to build these 500 homes. Let's say the first, or let's say 10% of these homes is going to be for affordable housing. Now, I don't want to confuse affordable housing with uh, low-income housing. Affordable housing is, is qualified folks coming in and buying a house. Well, let's say we talk to Mr. Developer and, and we say, well, 
If you're going to put these houses on the market for $200,000, let us give you a voucher that will buy down the price of this house. So in, in essence, you, you bring the house down to about $175,000, you find a, a qualified citizen to purchase that home, and it does two things. You're putting qualified folks in nice subdivisions with nice amenities, and also you remove that huge upfront cost that Greenville County Redevelopment Authority and all these other agencies see when it when when they have to go about doing the developments. Because at that point, you take the infrastructure equation out, you take uh, all these different other elements out, and all they have to do is focus on finding the folks to, to find that home and then giving them a voucher to buy that price down. And then you guarantee, Mr. Developer, that hey, you know, ten percent of these homes or, or whatever the number is. You can guarantee that hey, we're we're finding folks to put in these quality neighborhoods. Wow! So my last question, Karium, is what can residents expect from you as their city council representative? Going throughout this process, uh, the Lord laid it on my heart to say He he gave me two instructions. He said for me to run, and the second instruction was that every dollar we take in, put it back in the community. So and that's what we've done so far. Ninety five percent of our our donations is literally going back to the community. We started out this campaign, we purchased almost 700, let's see, 750 backpacks with school supplies. We went door to door across 11 different apartment complexes, uh, two different neighborhoods, and passed these backpacks out. Well, from there, we went on and had a block party. We had a block party down in Sunnyside, and we were able to feed probably 150 folks or more in the community. We had the blood connection out there. We had uh, the fire truck. We had uh, bounce houses. We had the food. We had vendors um, just to bring awareness to this upcoming election. And like I said, this isn't about me. This is about creating a better life for the next generation. So you won't hear me talk about you know, what have, hasn't been done in our communities. We all can see what hasn't been done. But I want to know what direction are we going? Where where is this train going to land, or where is this ship going 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 to come to port at? And I feel that we are on a cusp of exponential economic growth, and that we don't have another four years to to spare. You know, in four years we may miss the boat and we'll be left behind mm -hmm. with the pieces to pick up. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot in the community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, needless to say, we've done a lot in the community. You we've been really hitting have. the pavement very consistently mm -hmm. every week, always out doing something, visiting churches, talking to folks, answering questions, coming up with innovative ways to get our message out there. And I feel like we've done a, an excellent job partnering with folks. Um, we've, we've created all kind of community partnerships with businesses, with uh, prominent officials in the city that I think is going to carry on in the future mm -hmm. and that when we want to to do more things in the community, I can call them up and say, hey, I have a need. Um, can you help fulfill that mm -hmm. need? Well, Karim, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about what you're doing and it looks as if though you've done your homework, um, you know the community, you've been in the community, you and your wife, your children, like you said, you've been door to door, you've been to churches, and you are, you are very uh, innovative, you are very resourceful, you've uh, done your research, and I think that this is going to be an awesome, awesome time where um, you, you are going to make a difference in this community in District 2. So I just want to thank you and your wife for allowing me to come in your home and interview you today. Thank you. And I can't let this opportunity go by without acknowledging. I want to thank my wife for just uh, supporting me throughout this process and everyone that, I mean, I have five older brothers and sisters, my father, uh, aunts, uncles, different folks in the community that I didn't know was my cousins at the time, but now apparently we're related. Uh, I want to thank those folks that have supported me throughout this process. We're not done yet. This isn't the end of it all. And also, I want to also give a homage to my mother who passed away about six months ago. When I told her about this opportunity of me wanting to run for council, she was always my biggest cheerleader. I could do no wrong in her eyes. There were two folks that I can do no wrong with. That's my grandmother and that was my mother. Mm -hmm. Well, 
she she was behind me 100 percent. And she said, you can do this. And she always told us, um, never forget where we came from. And so me giving back to community is a way for me to never forget where we've come from because we've been blessed and it took a village to raise all six of us, you know, in a large household growing up. So um, I want to give honor to those folks and I want to thank those folks that uh, that has been supporting me, especially my wife, day to day, door to door, the late nights, the phone calls. And I just want to thank you for, for uh, interviewing me today and I truly appreciate it. November the 2nd, is the voting day. So give us um, multiple ways that uh, people can vote, how they can get there if they don't have transportation. Mm -hmm. Just talk a little bit about that. So actually there's a misconception. October 4th was the first day you could start voting in person. So you can go down to your local elections office and vote now. You can vote uh, if you're in Spartanburg County, you'll go down to County Square. If you're in Greenville County, you go to Greenville County Square. But you can vote from now all the way up to November 1st, uh, up until the election. Um, starting on November 2nd is in-person voting at your particular precinct. If you have any issues getting to the polling places, we have a, a hotline set up for, for people to call. And that number is 864-469-6540. Call that number, leave your name, your address, and a, a short message. We'll get back with you on how we can schedule a ride to pick up and take you to vote early or pick you up and take you to vote that, that day on November the 2nd. Yes, and I'm gonna look in this camera and I'm gonna tell you, if you're in District 2, make sure you get out November the 2nd and vote. Vote for change, vote for Carium v. Booker, Booker for Greer. November the 2nd, get out to the polls. If you don't have a way to the polls, make sure you contact someone that they can get you there. Vote November the 2nd.